Hello and welcome to Data at Play. This episode is going to be completely dedicated to the 2017 PAX West. I went, took uh, my kids, and here is most of what we saw, sort of. One of the things that I like about PAX is that it is not just about video games. Um, it really is a celebration of games, and I like that it's a family event. Uh, and I can bring my kids, and it's safe. So uh, they have a variety of things. You can uh, demo games. You can try out uh, both video games and tabletop games. Um, one of the games we tried out was Dwarves, uh, a card and dice game, uh, which was pretty cool, uh, looking at maybe picking that up. Um, they had uh, some old arcade cabinets. They had a whole bunch of them. Um, that were free to play, uh, just you know, in the in the hallway there, free to, to check out. Uh, Donkey Kong was a big hit with uh, several of my kids. Um, they also had a bunch of classic arcade, uh, classic consoles um, that you could, uh, you know, check out some games. Um, August uh, picked up. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 4, Turtles in Time, uh, wanted to play that. He didn't pick it up. He checked it out, played it. Um, and you can also uh, check out and play uh, some tabletop games, which I did with Dela and Xavier. Uh, one of the games that we played was uh, Gloobs, where you are matching uh, uh, the items on the table to the picture and trying to grab them up. And um, so there's a variety of things at PAX that, uh, that I really enjoy doing uh, with the kids. Um, and of course, cosplay. One of the days, uh, Dela dressed up as Misty from Pokemon. And so in some of the pictures, uh, you'll see her uh, not as Misty. In some of the pictures, you will see her as Misty. Um, it's quite fun. Uh, for PAX, what I almost always do is uh, go to Steve Jackson games multiple times, and this year was no different. I went back uh, several times with different combinations of my kids. Uh, so um, one of the first things that we did was we played uh, Super Kitty Bug Slap, uh, an upcoming game that is probably going to come out the first part of uh, 2018 and you match a uh, you got four player cards and you're trying to match the color the uh, shape or the insect that's on your uh, on your card you slap the pile usually it's one card at a time though um, and you accumulate points that way you slap the wrong card that's negative points there are some wild cards and uh, a couple of uh, non-matching cards in there just to trick you up. And it's a really fast-paced, uh, really fun game for all ages. Uh, we played that a few times. And we also played, let's see here, Chupacabra, a dice game. And then uh, we l learned how to play uh, Batman the Animated Series the dice game. Uh, which was a heck of a lot more fun than I thought it would be, and definitely something we need to pick up. Uh, my daughter and her friend uh, went down there to play, uh, they played Simon's Cat, uh, a game which we have here in the house, but uh, they played it down there at Steve Jackson Games. Uh, and uh, let's see, what else did we do? Uh, Munchkin, we played a rousing game of, of Munchkin, uh, where we were basically teaching my seven-year-old how to play Munchkin. And uh, it was quite the epic battle um, where uh, everybody got up to level uh, eight or nine. Uh, and uh, August wound up going all the way back down to level one. And I just somehow managed to win the game by defeating a level one potted plant. So, um, Steve Jackson Games is always, uh, always a fun time uh, at PAX. This year was no different, and uh, I had definitely come away with some recommendations. Over at Humble Bundle, uh, 
first title that we saw was Keyboard Sports, Saving QWERTY, where you basically use the entire keyboard to move your character around uh, from one place to another on the playing field. Uh, and you need to avoid obstacles or uh, get through a type of maze, uh, basically just to get from one area to the next, um, at least in part. But then there are sections where you hold the space bar and you press other buttons uh, on the keyboard to uh, like fire an arrow, uh, for example. Um, you see, here you see Xavier. He's you know holding the space bar down. He's just pressing the buttons to uh, to to spread his arrows all across the field to to survive. So that was a pretty fun game, actually. Look, um, you know, real simple uh, and fun. Another title that we saw was uh, Aegis Defender, uh, kind of a combination of platforming and tower defense, where you move around the playing field, uh, trying to get from one area to the next, you find a ruin, you build up the ruin, you build your defenses and defend it against uh, an oncoming uh, onslaught of monsters. Uh, it seems to be a pretty straightforward uh, game that both my kids, both of the kids that saw it, liked it. Uh, definitely something we might be uh, looking at uh, getting for the house here. Uh, same with uh, keyboard sports. Uh, they uh, liked. It's a co what I liked about it was that it was co-op. Uh, they had they really had to work together, uh, which was pretty cool. And then um, I got to play a Hat in Time, uh, and the part that I played was uh, the main character was on the train trying to solve a mystery. Um, it seemed like a pretty straightforward adventure title, and uh, you know, kind of a cute art style. Um, you, you know, going around, finding the clues, avoiding... Uh, the detection, uh, you know, of, of the bad guys. Uh, so all in all, pretty good, pretty good title to uh, to to look for. Uh, my my daughter was uh, pretty taken with it. And then there is Atari. Um, I'm kind of jealous. Uh, my son Xavier got his hands on Tempest Four Thousand. Um, it looks awesome. Um, this is absolutely going to be a hit. Uh, this is Twitch Arcade. Uh, it's just, it looks fantastic. And I cannot wait to get my hands on it. I, I want this title bad. Uh, Warner Brothers had Lego Marvel Super Heroes 2, uh, and I think we went there three times. Uh, everybody tried it out, and what's I mean, they liked it. Um, they got to play as the Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, they tried out quite a bit. Uh, you know, I mean, it's a Lego game. It's Marvel. I don't know what else you need to know. It's... Um, the kids liked it a lot. No, I mean, they liked it enough that um, they kept going back and playing it uh, several times over the weekend. Um, the only place that we hit more often than the Lego uh, Marvel Super Heroes 2 uh, booth were Nintendo and Steve Jackson games. But for sheer single title, um, it was this one. So, um, your mileage may vary, but uh, Lego and Marvel are a hard combination to beat. Pikuniku is an indie game that uh, my 
daughter, and uh, she sort of said, oh, let's try that out. And so her and uh, Xavier sat down, and uh, they really enjoyed it. It's a co-op puzzle platformer. Uh, you got these blobs with legs, and you're trying to basically get through the level. Um, later on in the weekend, when uh, my uh, when Dela had been able to bring a friend to PAX, uh, she took her, and the two of them played it again, uh, trying it out. So this is definitely a title that uh, has some broad appeal. Pikuniku. At least that's how I think you uh, pronounce it. Um, no Heroes Here is a combination of crafting and tower defense. Uh, Kieran and Xavier um, played this and really liked it a lot. Um, this was actually one of Kieran's favorite games of the show. Uh, and so this is definitely something that we are going to be uh, looking at uh, in, in bringing you more information about uh, in the near future. Um, basically, you have to take your resources in the castle and craft uh, gunpowder, then craft a cannon, and then take those and, and load up your cannon with both the gunpowder and the cannon and the cannonball, um, and then uh, in the right one in order to uh, destroy the enemy that's trying to destroy your castle. That did not work. And Tunic. What can I say? This was one of the games that we had to see. Um, no question about it. This was one of Kieran's absolute favorites uh, last year at PAX and has been asking about it ever since. Uh, so, uh, it was called Secret Legend, and it changed its name. The, you play as a fox who washes up on shore uh, with no recollection of how he got there and, and is trying to survive. Uh, there's a foreign language at play here. You are completely immersed in it, so you don't really quite... You, you're just like Tunic, you don't understand uh, everything that's going on. So, yes, there are comparisons to Legend of Zelda series. Yes, it's intentional because um, this was derived, from, uh, you know, it's insp directly inspired by Legend of Zelda. Uh, but it's, it is its own thing and it is fantastic. Um, looks greatly improved from last year. Um, it's got about a year to go before it is ready for release. Um, this is, again, a title that we will be closely watching and let you know more about it as we learn. The other absolute must-see title at uh, PAX that we knew of was Arrowheads, again, which Kieran had played last year and absolutely loved. And it is about to be released on the PC, with a console version coming next year. Uh, and we are going to be getting a review copy. Um, and Kieran is very, very much looking forward to this. There's been a lot added to the game since we've seen it. Uh, a lot of new power-ups, uh, a lot of new stages, tweaks to the artwork. But essentially this is um, a really fun combat uh, arena game that is really quirky and uh, yeah, I mean it's just a lot of fun and I'm really looking forward to um, actually getting this finally and finally, <laughs> partly because uh, I'm looking forward to uh, stopping Kieran from asking when it's going to be coming out but also looking forward to it because it's actually really fun to play so uh, and Kieran's really good at this one. <laughs> uh, I mean, we I don't know how long we sat there playing this game, uh, and he just kept beating everybody. Um, 
and it took uh, one of the developers actually to uh, to defeat him. So, um, anyway, uh, even though he defeated the uh, he beat the developer as well uh, in one of the matches. So, yep, there he is. He's celebrating his victory. So, uh, yeah, good game, Arrowheads. Galaxy of Pen and Paper is an RPG about playing RPGs. Uh, it was just released, and I'll be reviewing it shortly, but um, we got our hands on it at PAX. Um, my seven-year-old actually was interested in playing this. Uh, he enjoyed playing it, so that was sort of surprising. Um, it is a sequel to uh, a game that came out a few years ago, uh, Knights of uh, Pen and Paper and uh, this one took two and a half years to develop it and the other one took six months so it uh, shows you how much work was put into, into this one one of the things my seven year old Xavier likes to do is watch YouTube videos of people playing a game called Hello Neighbor so when he saw Hello Neighbor at PAX he freaked out. Um, he absolutely had to get his hands on it. So, it plays out much like an old uh, uh, puzzle adventure game where you're trying to sneak around in this house uh, trying to figure out what uh, that your neighbor is up to. And it is an absolutely crazy house with all sorts of weird rooms that uh, in, in many ways sort of defy the laws of physics. So, um, but you try not to get caught because uh, if he catches you, you reset. So, um, yep, there he is. He's caught and um, you, you are back in your own house. So, it seems to be, you know, a really all ages, a lot of people like, like this game, all ages. Uh, hello, neighbor. Over at Nintendo's booth, um, which was a far sight better this year than, than last year, um, kids got to play Pokken Tournament DX, which features a couple of new Pokemon. Um, it's really just a, a fighting game using Pokemon. Um, and I played it, I button mashed, and I won. Uh, it, you know, it's it was kind of fun. I mean, you know, it's kind of a different, uh, you know, it's an arena fighting game with Pokemon. Um, if your kids like Pokemon, then, you know, they might be interested in this. Um, it's not uh, too, it's not too bad. Uh, but that was Xavier there winning, uh, defeating his older brother. Here's Kieran. Uh, I, I don't even know who, what, what these Pokemon are. <laughs> so, but they had a lot of fun uh, playing playing this one. This one actually didn't have that long of a line. Uh, there was an absolutely huge line, however, to play uh, the upcoming Mario title. Uh, Super Mario Odyssey, I think it was called. Um, and I don't know. Um, it's a Mario game. There's uh, there's you know a bunch of different worlds, and you know Mario's got his hat that he can use as a as a as a weapon. Um, his hat is now sentient, so he can uh, throw it onto something and uh, sort of transfer his consciousness in a way um, to that item, which is uh, weird, but it also will help to uh, navigate certain obstacles. Uh, so, you know, you're, you're exploring, you're, you're completing certain, uh, I don't know if missions is the, is the right word, but uh, you've got, you know, tasks to, to accomplish. And you're, yeah, you're Mario. It's the new Mario game. Uh, I don't know what you expect, but it's, you know, it's Nintendo, it's Mario, it's, it's going to be good. Um, 
if you if you like this is basically going to be the benchmark for for platformers um, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite is a new, the sixth title in this franchise. Um, now it's only got two on two uh, fights, tag team uh, matches, and it features a real plot uh, where both Capcom and Marvel characters need to band together and uh, fight against the threat of Ultron. Nine Parchments is a title that I wasn't terribly excited over, but uh, when I finally did get my hands on it, um, I really liked it. Uh, it's a cooperative sort of a shoot 'em up, and um, you play as dropout wizards uh, looking to go on, you know, go on the hunt. Um, but you don't have all of your training, so you don't necessarily get things right. Uh, you can revive fallen uh, teammates. Um, you can switch between spells. Um, it's really actually quite fun. Um, it's got a, a, an arcade feel, um, but there's definitely some depth to it. So, uh, yeah, I liked it. Another game that I got my hands on was Plunge, where you swipe left, well, not quite, diagonally, um, to get through each level, but it's kind of a puzzle in that um, there are obstacles in each level. Uh, you cannot necessarily just you know, go straight to the, the exit uh, to get to the next level. Uh, you got to get the key. The key is not always not not easily accessible. There are uh, guards. Um, definitely something that I will be keeping an eye out for and letting you know. All right. Well, that's going to be it for my 2017 PAX West roundup. There were a couple of other things that uh, we saw. <clears throat> I'm going to save those for later. Um, and I'm also going to completely skip the uh, Exploding Kittens booth that we visited. I'm going to put that in its own update. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, learned a little something maybe. Um, got some inspiration to check out some uh, upcoming games that look uh, look good. Uh, and I will be talking with you soon. Um, if you would, please hit the subscribe button, uh, check out some other videos, and until next time, keep playing.